so I thought I'd do something different and actually show myself modeling from the beginning. So I'm going to be making a parametric uh, set of uh, ear gauges, plugs, whatever you want to call them because it always sucks to have to go and buy new ones for 30 bucks when you can print them out of NinjaFlex for 5 cents. So, yeah, why not? Uh, so we're going to need to know the thickness of your ear, whatever that is. We'll just set variables right now, I'm not sure what they are. It's probably closer to like, I don't know, 5 millimeters seems alright. And then we're going to need to know the diameter of whatever uh, of the plug that you want. So I'm just going to just going to throw a number to ten millimeter. What else do we need? I don't think there is much. Uh, we could say if it's hollow. Hollow equals true, and um, number quantity. Yeah, we'll just call it number. How many we want to make? Sure. So, to start off. Let's make just one. And do start off with a circle with a diameter of the thickness. Render that out. I'm gonna come here, rotate it on the what is that x-axis? 90 degrees and translate it out the uh, direction in the y direction I'm going to translate it out by diameter divided by 2 no that's not the right axis diameter divided by 2 there we go and then we come here Rotate, extrude, and I have the circle. Um, I'm trying to think now what I want to do with that. Um, let's see. That's more of what I wanted. Um, also put in here resolution. I like to do my stuff with extra resolution. So, resolution, and that just gives you more faces, makes it smoother. So you can see that. But, no. Don't need to be rendering all those faces all the time. Um, maybe just in the final one. So there's that. That looks all right. Um, let's see here. Now we're gonna want to, since the middle of this is the diameter that we want, we're gonna want to go in and take out the flare flare uh, I'm gonna give that an option so just make a difference here of the rotational extrude and another rotational extrude. 
but the second rotation looks true is going to be diameter. I am going to do flare. Flare offset equals three, whatever. So do plus flare offset. Bam. There we go. So three might be a little much, but it's okay. It looks fine. Um, now that we have that, I'm going to want to do. Uh, hmm. I'm trying to think here. I don't actually want this one because that gives that center is always hollow. So I'm going to. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do cylinder. has a diameter of diameter and a height of thickness and I'm going to equals true. I'm not sure why that is making that go away. Oh, because there's no difference to do because I did the flare offset. Okay. Okay. So before it was actually bigger, so now I can just do my thickness and then my flare offset is going to be yeah so plus flare offset So this should always be the thickness. Diameter should always be the thickness. And it should go in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this. Maybe. Ah. Hmm. Yeah, that'll work, I guess. So it'll always be one there, and right here will be flare, flare offset, flare offset. So I'll want to make this like 0 0.8, 0 0.5, trying to, so that's what one gives me. So 1.5, 1.25, 1 here. I'll go and add that there so that I can actually see what I'm doing here. And see what 1 is. Okay. So that's one. I'm trying to think. I should also do the flare offset on here. Because that will make it so that if I do that, it gets really tall as well. Flare offset Z. Just make it look all pretty. Flare offset Z. Yeah. 
There we go, it's looking better. It's getting somewhere. I guess I could just do that. Just my Z. Set these to zero. And then my flare offset is just there. I can't set those to be one. Scaled one. Uh, and then come set that so I can actually see where they're intersecting. And we see that we're not actually getting our full uh, outside. So what we can do to fix that is I think if we come in here and we're translating our flare offset okay okay plus the thickness divided by two and then minus flare depth. So there's our flare depth. And you see we're still cutting off the edge a little bit. So we draw our flare depth to zero, flare up to 0.25, we get that there. And then now that that's about how deep I actually want it, I'm gonna say I want it to be a millimeter deep. Now that that's how deep I want it, now I can come here and decide how tall I want that. So I want it to go to the edge. So that looks pretty good. And then here I can again set my fn equals resolution. So that would be it for a very, very basic plug. Um, what I'm going to do now, though, <clears throat> is this is my function section, and I'm going to make a hmm, module section. In my module section, I'm going to make some fun stuff. I'm going to make another cylinder. Um, that is height of thickness, and then if n equals 5, set this to be 5 side. Five side. And I'm going to render out only five side? Is that how you do that? Um, apparently five is a thing. Five sides exclamation will make it only render the five sides. So oh, I need my radius equals uh, I need to diameter equals the diameter minus inside size, whatever that is. 
which I'm just going to set to diameter minus 3 by default. Copy that, put that there. There we go. Now it has five sides. So what fun we can do with that height equals thickness. So what we can do here <coughs> is uh I'm going to actually set this as a full module and just call it the base. And then difference, I'm going to come in, I'm going to put the difference of base minus five sides. If I look while I type. And there's our base minus five sides. You can see that it's not actually all the way through. So I'm going to come here, oh, I did diameter minus, diameter minus 3, there we go. So come here and set center equal to true, and there you go, goes all the way through. That's fun, <coughs> um, and I'm just going to set this to sides. Uh, I'll just call it sides. So I won't even call it five sides anymore, just sides. That way I don't have to do any kind of if statements or anything like that. All I do is come here and I'm like, hmm, I want eight sides. Uh, I don't know. I just want it to be a circle. I'll just do like 100. But it doesn't follow that flare. That's okay, but I'd like it to. So what I'm going to do here is oh, a triangle. Woohoo! I don't set anything that low. I bet if you set it two, it doesn't do anything. Yeah, doesn't do it. So you can set that to any shape that you want there. And then down here, it's still, you can't get with the flare. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here to the open SCAD. It's just looking up the rotation looks true. Um, if statements. So if statements. So, if condition else perfect, just throw that right in there. If condition then it sides, else it will be base that is scaled, and that. I will show you. We'll make it so that it'll follow the contour. So I'm gonna do a uh, wall thickness. So I'm gonna call not there my x and my y directions. Always make sure that it looks nice. Equals, I'm going to do wall thickness just a millimeter. So my condition 
is going to be if I'm going to say you want a shape or do you want to be solid or what else is there? There's a shape, there's a solid, and there is thin wall. So I'm going to set in here uh, center equals, not center, since we're all using center equals true on so many things. I'm do middle equals um, middle equals shape. If middle equals shape, then sides. No? Yeah. Double quotes. So if middle equals sides, then shape. Else, if middle equals um, thin wall, then that will happen. And then else. Nothing. So that will be just the base. So I'm going to do thin underscore wall. Ignoring unknown variable thin wall. Okay, so you can see it is actually rendering it out in there. You have to hit the right ones. So it's scaling it to 1, so I want to scale it to like 0.8, and that gives me the same contour. Same roundedness with the original, and it gives me this nice looking thing. Now, this should probably be printed like a sp spiral vase and printed in like Ninja Flex or something like that. You could flex that and you could stretch with it. You know, if we wanted to make it, point now, we'd make it really thin. You could really make it whatever thickness your filament happens to be, or if we wanted to make it 0.5, we could just make it really small. Um, so that's fun. And now, you can see, it's symmetrical. Now, all we have to do is say, what if you want multiples? So even though this is going to be a function or a module, I'm going to keep it in the function section since it's our main function of things. I'm going to give us some more space and go back here. Look at syntax for looping or loop. There you go. We'll do this. Bam. So, we'll be finished for, what did I call it, quantity number, number, right, yeah, number, for number, we'll come here and finished. Translate 
I always like to put in zeros to begin with. So we're going to translate this. I'm just going to call this also number. Um, we're going to translate this in. So let's do the extraction number times the diameter. That way they never run into each other. They're just right next to each other. We'll do like diameter plus three. Oh. Number plus three. Oh, let's see that didn't work either. Let's make the number smaller. Let's just do two. Slow down my computer. Um, it's where that's doing three if I put two. Definitely weird. Oh, there. Now it'll do what I want. So number times two times diameter. That'll do it, I guess. That's still like number like plus three times number. Maybe I need to do something like that. I'll just translate some more out. Just gotta get your math right. There we go. So that is that. They're not very centered, so what I'm going to do is do number minus one, do zero, and then I'll make it so that it, this instead of this one being the first one, this one's the first one. Yeah, you can see if I put one, then we're only going to have the one. If I put negative five, then we're going to have it repeating in the negative direction. There. And that makes it the center. So now you have up here we can go through the whole thing. I'll center this out with the rest of my stuff. So middle equals thin wall or it can be solid or it can be a shape. shape, thin wall, solid. Solid is really anything, because I just set that else, else statement so that if it's anything but the two, it goes to default solid. So I already finished this video, and then I had an awesome idea. I'm going to add another thing here called icon. I'm going to make icon. And then I'm going to come here and make another module called icon. And then we're going to come here. I'm not sure how to do it. Um, open SCAD, te not test, text. Yeah, this is what I wanted. So we aren't actually going to be putting text. We are going to be putting font awesome icons. So I already installed font awesome on my laptop so I can just do this. If you haven't I have another video I'll link it in the description to 
how to get Font Awesome installed on your computer. Um, and then I'm going to come here to linear Linear extrude. I think that's how you do it. Yeah. So linear extrude. And we're going to do height is thick. Thickness times two, and then I'm actually going to translate this in the negative direction of thickness. That'll just make it so that it actually is centered here. If you just do linear, it sort of just go up. And then we're going to come over here to Font Awesome's cheat sheet. I also link this in the description, and let's just find. Yeah, let's do that. Let's just copy the little Android guy. So let's see where that actually came up if we can. Oh. It's because I don't have this else if. Icon, icon. Okay, so you can see that Android guy kind of there. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to set another few uh, size equals. I think I can do size equals. Diameter. Do that. Something like that. We will set a icon size variable equals five. Size equals icon size. And then I'm going to do a translate here. I guess I can just use this other translate. I'm going to go negative icon size. Negative icon size. Let's see if we can get that. Divide by two. All right, all right. And that's pretty darn centered. And then you have a little Android guy plugs. But there's a lot of stuff on here. One little Apple icon? Sure. Why not? Bam, Apple plugs. If you want, hmm, let's see, lightning bolt? That could be cool. Lightning bolt. So, because it's still a little bit weird, I'll do make center. No, I don't know. Can you center text? Center, vertical, 45. Mm. Uh, yeah, so it looks like you can. So, each line Huh. Okay. Well, each line equals center. That'd be best for this. And then I don't need that. So 
imagine if it's H line, it's probably also V line. There you go. So let's see what else other cool stuff there is. Hmm. Say you want. I don't know. There's so many things. And this is just font off some text. An I. I guess that would just fall out. You know, maybe I could put a bottom layer if it's an icon. Sure. Let's do. Bottom layer equals true. So come in here and make another if statement inside of my icon if statement where it's if it's icon and if bottom layer is equal to true then I'll do a cylinder with radius diameter equal to the diameter and the height equal to bottom layer height and then I will do fn equals what did I call that? resolution so the difference and I don't want that so I'm going to take that out and add that. So that's the difference. Outside of the difference. So if bottom layer equals true, then true and um, middle equals icon, I don't know why you'd want a bottom layer if it's not an icon, so I'm just going to do it this way. What did I do wrong there? Do I do a double and sign? And oh, what is it? Being weird. Um, oh, yeah, the statement. If statements, let's see here. And plus. So, there we go. Okay. So, unknown variable icon, okay, so now bottom layer equals true, my height is bottom layer height, so I have to set that. long variable name okay is equal to one oh, no, it didn't give it to me 
100 wrong here. If bottom layer equals to true, let's do just that. There we go. Okay, well, I guess we'll just leave it like that then. So if you have bottom layer, no matter what it is, it'll be there. And then I'm gonna do translate half. I'm trying to think, do I actually want it to be at the bottom or do I want it to be in the middle so that you can reverse them? I think it'd be best if it was in the middle so you could reverse them. So what I'm going to do is do diameter minus um, I'm just going to do inside size. Alright, yeah, there you go. So it's that inside size. Can't see it on the outside, but you can truly tell that it's in there. You know, OpenSCAD kind of messes up when you haven't rendered it all the way. So that's cool. That'll be a little bit of bridging, but worth it. These are pretty awesome. Let's go back and see what else we have. I'm going to set this to false. Oh, and I took out that. Okay. So let's see what other cool things there are in Font Awesome. Say you're going to graduation. Just graduated from something. Bam. Celebratory. And then icon size, four. Now they fit. Now they aren't going over the sides or anything like that. And that'll print without having anything fall out. Hmm. Let's say you print in some kind of magnetic filament that I've never heard of. But bam. Because that's cool. Say, for some chance, you are part of the rebellion. <laughs> and in order to be part of the rebellion, you have to support the brand. Or, see here, there's also icons for if you work at Microsoft, which I hope you don't. Or, Facebook. Google Plus, if you want a Google logo, you just come and copy the Google Plus logo. So these ones is where you would want to set this to true so that those centers don't fall out. Because if there's nothing keeping them attached, they'll just fall out as soon as you take them off the bed. Or you're a fireman. Anyways, I think you understand how cool this is. How awesome it is to be able to make whatever kind, of, again, you would want that middle, uh, whatever kind of things you want. Make it whatever. You know, if you're a YouTube person. You know, can go grab the YouTube logo. So, I really hope everyone has fun with this, and thank you.